Hello everyone and welcome to the game you guys requested uh, yesterday in yesterday's video. I didn't think I was going to be making a video on this one, but so many of you requested it. Uh, here it is. It is a game from the final round of the Super, Bl Super Bad Blitz tournament. Magnus Carlsen versus Young Shisht of Duda. And you know that Duda was leading the entire tournament. He won the Rapids. He was leading after the first day of Blitz. But then Magnus just went on a killing spree uh, in the final day. Uh, pretty much uh, uh, adopted everyone. And uh, in the final round, uh, he met Duda with 20, two and a half points Duda had 21 and a half points and uh, if Duda wins they go into tie breaks so let's see uh, what happened here it's quite uh, quite a wild game uh, if you haven't seen it you will enjoy it uh, so Magnus has the white pieces and he opens with e4 Duda goes for a very strange variation of the Sicilian defense knight to f3 and pawn to b6 this is the Catalimo variation uh, which uh, you know is used often to confuse your opponent but also to uh, start by developing your queen side first <laughs> We have pawn to d4, captures, captures, and now bishop to b7, attacking d4 pawn, knight to c3, and now pawn to a6, taking away the b5 square from the uh, both uh, white knights, and now bishop to g5. So you can see that black still hasn't uh, started developing the center or the king side. We have queen to c7, and now Magnus plays knight to d5. He attacks Duda's queen here, and Duda just plays queen to e5. He puts pressure on the bishop on g5, uh, but also maybe he can win that knight on d5. So here we have bishop to e3 and now pawn to e6. Duda, Duda doesn't want to capture the knight because if he does, yes, he wins the pawn, but at what price? Magnus will get a whole lot of development in and it's just not something you want to do uh, against, uh, well, against anyone, but uh, let alone against Magnus in a blitz game. Let's say e5, you can even trade off the queens, doesn't really matter. Captures, captures, so white still has so much development in. Uh, for the price of that one pawn and of course the mighty bishop pair this bishop is coming to f3 this bishop is putting pressure on b6 so uh, there is no upside here for black so instead pawn to e6 was played uh, knight to f3 attacking the queen and now duda can no longer keep an eye on the uh, c7 square even if he just goes back bishop to f4 and knight to c7 check is coming so duda accepts it knight captures on e4 Queen captures on e4, knight to c7 with check, and now king to e7. Magnus gobbles up the rook, bishop captures, and now queen to d4. Magnus was able to trade off the queens, and now he wants to go into the end game. And there is a game where queen captures on d4 was played, but Duda plays b5, and it is now as of move 12 that we have a completely new game. Now Magnus plays a4, that makes sense, you always play this when you have uh, the, the black pawns on a6 and b5, you want to either double them or mess up with black pawn structure, and Duda trades queens. We have captures, captures, and pawn to b, sorry, captures with the knight, and pawn to b4, grabbing more space on the king's side, a5, Magnus does the same, knight to f6, and knight to b3. Now is Magnus being up the exchange enough to actually win this? Uh, well, let's see. Knight to d5, we have bishop to a7, and now knight to c6. And now we have bishop back to b6. Now Magnus is ready to capture on a6. And while Duda can defend, let's say bishop to b7, then knight c5 is really annoying. And uh, again, you're defending the pawn uh, when you could be developing. And, uh, you know, a strong player, when given a choice of uh, giving up a pawn or giving up development, everyone uh, gives up material. Uh, so g5, he wants to... Uh, make use of this diagonal and force Magnus defend. We have bishop captures on a6, bishop to g7, and now rook to a2, defending the pawn. Uh, rook to b8 and bishop to e2. Finally, knight captures on b6, a captures, and knight to d4. You still can't touch the pawn because the bishop on a8 would hang. So here, knight captures, bishop captures, and bishop to f3, offering a trade of bishops. Duda happily accepts g captures and now pawn to b3. Yes, Magnus does have a 3 to 1 advantage on the queen side, but do that takes care of that with a single pawn push and this wouldn't be possible if the pawn was not on b4 of course so pawn to b3 c captures on b3 and the rook captures on b6 we have pawn to h4 magnus wants to open up the king side and then go for some nice rook lifting h6 and now captures captures uh, king to e2 and the rook captures on b3 so gobbling up all of the all of the pawns and uh, getting ready to capture on b2 as well and while you could defend this with rook to b1 i mean look at this uh, what what uh, th that's no way to, to to play chess or to live uh, so instead rook to d1 magnus gives up the b2 pawn we have bishop to b6 and now rook to d3 offering a trade but just a rook to b5 not ready to capture the pawn just yet pawn to b3 and pawn to f5 we have rook to a4 and bishop to c5 uh, duda knows that uh, uh, the, the, this pawn will never 
uh, be able to, to cross b4, it doesn't really matter what the Magnus does, so pawn to b4, bishop to b6, and now rook to b3. We have king to f6, rook to a8, and now bishop again to c5, attacking the b4 pawn. Now either you repeat with rook to a4, or you try something else. Here, uh, Magnus played rook to a5, he forced the... Uh, an endgame uh, where he will have a rook against the bishop. The problem is after rook captures, rook captures, and bishop captures on b4, is that uh, now Duda has four pawns and Magnus has only two pawns, and that's a doubled f pawn, so not, not the greatest. d6, we have rook to d7, bishop to c5, rook to h7, and king to e5. And uh, if you're wondering if anyone is playing for the win here, uh, it is only Duda who's playing for a win here. Magnus can only wait and see what Duda will do. Uh, rook to g7 going after the pawn here. King to f4 and now rook to g6. We have pawn to e5. Everything is nicely defended. But now if Duda wants to continue pushing further, he will have to trade some pawns, which means that Magnus will undouble his pawn. So rook g8, bishop d4, rook to d8, and bishop to c5. We have rook to a8, pawn to g4. Uh, we have to start uh, trading. Rook a4 check, bishop d4, captures, captures on g4, and now pawn to f3 with check. Uh, king to f4, rook to a8, and now pawn to e4. So the last pawn for white will be traded off, f captures on e4, f captures on e4, and rook to f8 with check. We have king to e5, and rook to e8 with check. King to d5, and now king to d2. And now uh, Duda has to figure out a way uh, how to uh, continue pushing those pawns. Now, uh, the dream would be to have this pawn on d3, this pawn successfully pushed to e2, so the pawns should be on light squares, and you will use your dark square bishop, for example, to kick the king off of the dark squares, and then you win the game. If you can achieve this, you win. If not, then it's a draw. So here, bishop to c5, king to e2, king to d4, and rook to a5. d5, another pawn push, we have rook to a4 and king to e5. We have uh, rook to a5, bishop to b6, rook to b5, and now uh, bishop to g1. Rook to b1, harassing the bishop, bishop to c5, rook to h1, and another pawn push. Rook to pawn to d4. Uh, rook to h5 with check, king to d6, and now rook to f5. We have bishop to b4, rook to h5, king to e6, and now rook to b5. So uh, first you have to uh, uh, get a, uh, a perfect setup on how to advance that pawn, but if Magnus doesn't allow it, and if he plays precisely, he will not be able to do it. So here rook to h3 does just that. Now while you can advance this pawn to d3 with check, he will just give up the rook, and that's it. Now it's a draw by insufficient material. That's uh, if if uh, there was if this trick wasn't in the position, then it would be uh, impossible to defend. So king d5 by Magnus uh, by Duda, rook to h5, check king e6, rook h3 again, king to d6, rook a3, king to c5, rook to a5, check king to b4. We have rook to d5, and here Magnus made um, an inaccuracy that could cost him the game. He should have played rook to f5, but now Duda finds uh, the correct way to win the game. King to c4, attacks the rook, rook to f5, and now d3 with check. King to d1, and now uh, Duda can play pretty much any move with the bishop except the one that he played, bishop to g3. Now the problem is uh, Magnus has a way of saving the position and I'm sure you guys know what it is. Uh, but just in case to brush up on your endgame skills, feel free to pause the video and don't lose this position for white uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on being a true master of the endgame, as I have no doubt all of you are. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is rook to g5. It's merely a matter of winning a tempo, so rook to g4 can be played and you can pin that e4 uh, e4 pawn. So bishop to f2, we have rook to g4. Now the king has to come over and help defend the pawn and you don't have time for e3, e2. Uh, king to d5 and now rook to g8. We have king to d4. Again, uh, Magnus blunders the game, but but this is blitz only a few seconds on the clock and uh, it's incredibly difficult to win this. Bishop to d4 is the only winning move here for Duda and yeah, good luck finding that with seconds on the clock. I will however show it because it's beautiful. Uh, point is that after rook to d8 to check, you will create this uh, sort of a barrier, rook to c8 check and now bishop to c5 and now you have the e3 square defended and uh, there's no way to um, uh, stop pawn to e3, pawn to e2. So even if rook to h8, even if you try something like this, let's say pawn to e3, and now rook to h4 check, king uh, bishop to d4 can be used to block, and after uh, rook to g4, king d5, you will give a few more checks, check, check, bishop to e5, rook to g8, and now king to e4, rook to e8, um, that means the bishop, king to f4, now rook to f8 check, king to g4, rook to g8 check, king to f3, and after one more check, bishop to f4 will be played, 
and now e2 check is winning. There is no defense against that because the king is also covering the e2 square, so you will not be able to give up the rook. So whatever you play, either this is winning or now even this is winning. It doesn't really matter what you play. King d1, e2 with check, everything is nicely defended. You're going to move d1 queen and of course easy, easy win. Uh, however, due to missed it, king to d4 was played and now rook to d8 with check. Magnus uh, again uh, gets uh, another lease on life, bishop h4, rook e6, and again he will just harass that bishop and not allow the pawn to be pushed from e4. So again, rook to d8 now stops the e pawn from being pushed because rook captures on d3. So king f4, rook d7, king e3, rook d8, bishop c3, rook to d7, and king f4. Now, if uh, Magnus doesn't mess it up, it will be a draw. So uh, a lot of moves were played because it's a very, very long game it's basically a, a you know a game of cat and mouse so king c3 king e5 rook f8 bishop f4 rook f7 bishop e3 rook f8 bishop d4 with check move 100 has been reached king to d2 bishop to c5 and rook to f7 so uh, rook f4, bishop to b4, check, king d1, bishop c3, rook h4, king d5, another check, rook c5, bishop d4, rook a5, and now king to d6. Uh, the problem again here with e3 is that rook to a3 can be played, and there's no way to defend the uh, d3 pawn. You can't uh, do, do anything about that, and if you play d2, then you have your pawns on dark squares. We discussed that the pawns need to be on light squares so the bishop can maneuver between them on the dark squares, but now king e2 and you are never uh, getting rid of this king from a light square. So after rook to a5, king to d6 was played, and now we have rook to a8. We have king to e5 and the rook to e8 with check. Sorry, uh, there seems to be a fly attacking me from... Uh, from somewhere. Uh, king to f4 and now rook to d8. Bishop to c3, rook to f8 check, king to e3 and the rook to e8. Again, no way to make progress here. Uh, stopping rook to d8, but now just rook to e6, preparing rook d6 if needed, king to d4, rook d6, check, king c4, rook e6, king to d5, and now you have to play rook to g6, however, uh, or rook to h6, like those are the moves you want to play, however, rook to e8 was played, and now Duda is again completely winning, but only if he finds bishop to c8, c7, or b6, he did not play that, he played king to d4, the reason why this is so strong now, because uh, you are able to uh, repeat the exact same maneuver that we already discussed. The uh, uh, point is that you will uh, shift your king all the way at uh, to f3, uh, block it with bishop to f4, and then e2, e2 or d2 is unstoppable. However, he missed that, he played king to d4, now comes rook to a8, bishop to c7, and rook to c8. And now again, Magnus uh, blunders the game, bishop to b6 is again winning because you can get the exact same setup. However, r uh, bishop to f4 was played, rook to d8 with check, King to c3, rook to c8 with check, king b3, and rook to f8. And here, uh, Duda just gave up uh, on, on trying bishop to h6. Or maybe it's even the 50 move <laughs> rule already, I don't know. Rook to h8, bishop g7, rook to 8 king c3, and after rook captures on e4, he was in this position on move 124 that the players agreed to a draw, as there is nothing more to be done here. You couldn't win with two extra pawns, now with one, of course, there is no chance. Uh, so yeah, uh, really a wild game where Magnus definitely got the early uh, advantage after this uh, winning of the rook on a8, but it's hard to say in blitz, I mean, probably with perfect plays, it's just a draw, uh, but then Duda uh, got some actual winning positions, I think he was winning five times uh, throughout the game, but that's the problem with blitz, a few seconds on the clock, it's not easy to, um, uh, you know, to, to make anything out of your, your position, and Magnus is just a very, very resilient defender. So yeah, Duda had a chance to catch up to Magnus in the final round and force tie breaks, but Magnus held to a draw, uh, and that's how he won the tournament. For those of you who missed uh, my previous video, uh, you can see that at some point in the tournament, Magnus just went berserk and he almost adopted the field, uh, getting a nine and a half out of out of ten victories from ten games, which is absolutely incredible. So he caught up to Duda, and he, uh, you know, which stood Duda's uh, uh, onslaught in the final round, uh, uh, winning him the final, uh, the the uh, the first place. Uh, so here you can see 24 uh, points for Magnus, 23 for Duda, second place. Uh, third, Wesley and Maxim Vachel Legrau with 21 and a half. With 20 and a half, we have Levon Aronian, Richard Rapport with 18. Uh, Anish Giri 15, Shevchenko Kirill with 13, Bogdan Daniel Dak 12 and a half, and uh, Radoslav Wojtaszek last place uh, with 11 points. So yeah, uh, truly an incredible game, an incredible struggle, you know, a great, great uh, attempt by Duda, but, you know, very, very strong defense by Magnus. Um, so yeah, what are you going to do? 
uh, Magnus wins and uh, it seems that he is definitely back from his vacation wherever he was you know he was playing some poker probably doing some sports you know just chilling a little bit and he even said at some point that maybe he even forgot how to play chess but uh, it doesn't seem to be the case and as uh, Kasparov said, uh, his embrace of a Viking appearance seems to have paid off in Warsaw. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And this very short coverage of the uh, Superbet Rapid and Blitz tournament uh, that was played in Poland. Uh, I would like to thank GolfSoftware.com, Ravishing Reptiles YouTube, Goran Vodopia, Urush Petrovic, and Markus Grebel for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon, continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions uh, and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.